Hello and welcome to the Queer Monkey Institute, our Q&A conversation for exploration series. I'm Paul Robert, the executive director and president of the Institute, along with my wife, Laura Lee, the director of research, education, and outreach. And of course, on behalf of our board of directors, advisors, volunteers, and supporting members, we want to thank you for joining us today. The Queer Monkey Institute is an independent, nonprofit research organization committed to researching consciousness and the human experience following the footsteps of our founder, anthropologist Dr. Felicitas Goodman. And as an educational institution, we take an open approach and invite scholars in related fields to help broaden the scope of our own work and exploration. And that's why we call this Conversation for Exploration. And on these weekly Sunday discussions, We've had a full spectrum of topics from neuroscience, anthropology, art history, archaeology, mythology, mysticism, trance states, shamanism, wisdom traditions, sacred dance. It goes on and on. And you're welcome it's to... It's a big universe out there. Exactly. Like you're say. welcome to visit our website at queermongainstitute.com. All of these presentations are free. And as a nonprofit, we invite you to become a supporting member. And of course, we thank you, the community members who continue to support the mission of the Queer Mugga Institute. Today, Corinne Dempsey returns. And she brings along with her a special guest, one that was featured in her book, Bridges Between the Worlds, Spirits, and Spirit Work in Northern Iceland. And as a returning guest, Corinne shares with us like she did in a previous interview, Iceland, we find mediums, we find spirit practitioners who follow traditions that are actually everyday regular citizens. And we're so pleased that she's invited a traditional Icelandic healer uh, in seer to share his life journey, calling by the spirits, the healing methods, and how we may all activate that flow of life force and healing within ourselves. Boy, healing everybody is interested in healing because we've needed healing or we've participated in healing in some capacity. We want to find our own healing powers within whatever that capacity may be. It's such a multifaceted process and everyone wants to live their true destiny and what you are called to this life to do, this life to learn. And our guests today have certainly done that. And by sharing their stories, we can learn so much about that process and the rewards that it brings. So let us welcome Corinne Dempsey. Welcome back. And you are going to introduce for us Johan Sigurdsson. We're going to call him Johan, uh, one of the healers featured in your book, who has so much wisdom, life wisdom to share. So I'll leave it to you to make the introductions. Thank you, Corinne, and good to see Hi. you again. Yeah, thank you, Laura and Paul. Uh, it's great to be here. And I was saying as we were warming up uh, before we turned on um, the uh, record that when I was here last time, I you know, was happy to share what I'd learned in Iceland with uh, interviews with people who are part of this tradition, um, but kind of felt uh, like I was maybe not the one to be talking. I should, you know, should be someone from Iceland talking. Um, so I'm really thrilled that um, Yoe is able to join us today. And, and there are a number of people I could have chosen to come um, and speak about their own experience and their understanding of the tradition. And um, every one of them is different and special. And um, Yoe is particularly passionate about teaching people about their own abilities that, that, you know, that could be tapped into. So I think it's a great fit for, um, for your institute. So I'm just gonna you know, give a tiny bit of background. I promised I wouldn't go on too long, although um, people said it was okay. And welcome, Yoe. Relax. Yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna introduce Yoe. Okay. So yeah, Yoe, it's awesome you're here to wanna to, uh, neglect you. <clears throat> so just to, to give a sense of where we're coming from, leading us to an introduction to Yoe, I will start from here. Okay, so, so just to give some background so, so we know sort of the, the context from which Yoe's um, going to be speaking to us, uh, gratefully. Um, the, the tradition in Iceland today uh, of working with spirits, and it's largely a tradition today of, of healing, um, especially in Akureyri, the emphasis is in healing. This is Northern Iceland, is called Andleg Mal. Andleg Mal, actually, it's the, the actual translation is it's spirity stuff. <laughs> but, but the way people 
uh, have agreed that it translates best in terms of meaning is spirit work. So, um, so there's a picture of Akareri. There's pictures of Northern Lights. Um, it's actually on the um, cover of my book. And just to give a, a quick background in terms of where uh, Andleg Maul is rooted, you could say that um, this is a tradition, the traditions of healing, of trance, of, of projecting the future. They're written about in the sagas, uh, written about in the sagas that were written in around the 13th century, but referring to, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago, uh, a couple hundreds of years ago, the, the great families. Um, this woman here is a vulva. She's, she was someone who would go into trance and the nature spirits would help her prophesy. The next stage, even though between the 13th century and the 20th century, there's tons of folklore having to do with spirits and ghosts. Uh, Yoi might know, I mean, there are more words for ghosts and spirits than, it's like words for snow. Uh, in in like among the um, northern people, there's there's so many words of spirits and ghosts. It's a big part of folklore, but in the, in the 20th century, early 20th century, I think it was uh, 1906, uh, it, there was a boom of spiritualism in Iceland. These two are very famous um, leaders of that movement: Harald Dur Nielsen and Indradi Indradi the Sun. Um, and it boomed and it was popular and then uh, the, the church no longer supported it and it kind of went underground and then around 1990-ish it sort of picked up speed again and today it's not called spiritualism it's called unlegmal so it's detached from and I want to make that clear the reason why I want to make that clear is because spiritualism has particular ways and creeds of you know things that they kind of hold in place where mm -hmm. Antleg Mal is as a lot of the um, people I spoke with is free mm -hmm. free meaning free spirits like everyone has their own way of doing this we understand the universe roughly in the same way but nobody does it the same way so there's no actual or organically grown absolutely absolutely which okay, is so there's that point. You're you're called. It's emerging through you. So. Right, right. And and everyone's different. And actually, the mantra and and Yoi will back me up on this is that there's no one right way to do it. I mean, that is incredibly important. And that's why I say everyone I have met is different. Yoi brings his own philosophy and experience with him. So um, I think that's really important because it allows people to work with their own strengths rather than trying to fit into someone else's. Okay, so geography, we have Akureyri is here at the top. You can see it at the end of this Eya Fjordr, which is a, a fjord, a, one of the largest fjords of Iceland. Mm -hmm. Down here is Reykjavik. Okay. So just so you have a sense of scale, Reykjavik is almost 300,000, I think now, wow. or two, a little, uh, 250,000. Yo, how much, how much, what's the population of Reykjavik right now? Well, we are around 360 something people uh, in Iceland. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, nice to meet oh, you. Yeah. Uh, okay. So start yeah. with that. Uh, uh, we are around, uh, yeah, well, I think there is around, uh, well, in Reykjavik area, that's the largest area around 100. Uh, I don't, I, yeah. I, I think it's. Yeah, no. around the, this south area here. Yeah. The most. Uh, population are living there. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just finish this and then I'll, I'll, we'll move on. I'm sorry. I just thought maybe you had a number in your head. It's like 200,000 in that region, yeah. 300,000 yeah. in the whole island. Akureyri is, yeah. yeah, it's 360. Akureyri now is, is moved up to 18,000. Wow. <laughs> um, and it is the second biggest city uh, in Iceland. So Akureyri is the Northern capital. So if you get the sense of scale, Reykjavik is really the center of gravity. Akureyri has, you know, a, a lively um, sort of art, music, theater, you know, just it's a wonderful, wonderful, self-sufficient city, but it's very small. The benefit of being from Akureyri for Antleg Mal is that it's not away from the center of gravity and it's much freer still than people in Reykjavik to practice Antleg Mal as they feel they want to. Reykjavik is still tied to spiritualism, still has a lot more rules and regulations. So Akureyri um, adds to that freedom. So here's just a pretty picture of Akureyri. You can see the, the um, fjord and, and uh, the lights on one side and the mountains on the other, Kaltbakr, which keeps it safe. 
And then finally, uh, the Saulo is in Akureyri and other parts of Iceland is the place, the meeting place, traditional, traditional meeting place for people who are working in, in um, Antlik Mal. And, and the three main uh, practices are, are prayer circles where people get together and pray. And then the um, trance sessions where people, this chair here is where the trance medium would sit, where spirits visit through the trance medium and also then healing sessions that are in these same rooms, they just change them according to what's needed. And, and Yoa, I understand that things are changing. Uh, the salo is a little different um, than it's been. And that's a whole nother uh, issue. So on the right here is my book, just so you can see that. Um, so let me now um, introduce Yoa uh, to you all. I want to get my notes so I, I get all the details. So, okay, so Yoe, uh, thank you so much um, for joining us. Uh, I'm glad the timing worked. Uh, I was thinking of another person I'd like to bring along and she's on vacation in Spain. Um, so Yoe is here um, and able to be with us, which is really great. So I am now looking for my notes. Okay, so Yoe, here we go. Uh, is as mentioned, I think by Paul just a second ago, the folks who work in Anlag Mal are regular uh, people with day jobs, mostly. Not all of them, but most of them are. Um, and so, yo, it's, you know, from it's a whole range of things, teachers, accountants, um, construction workers, IT workers, nurses. I mean, just there's a whole range of, of things that people do. Uh, Yoi is uh, an auto mechanic who also for a period of time was the elected leader of the Craftsman's Union. So he's a, a leader in that community. Um, his story, he's going to tell you, you're gonna fill people in, but Yoi, I'm just gonna say a word about how your story of Skigni Galva, your ability to perceive um, spirits uh, is in some ways typical in that it started when you were a child um, and, and also somewhat typical, your mother kind of, helped calm your sense of what was going on because you said, don't worry, it's normal. And this is something that runs in the family. And that sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't. So you're very fortunate that way. Also typical in that your Skigni Galva, this ability disappeared around the age of 14 because a lot of times it happens in the sort of um, adolescent period, it kind of recedes or disappears. And as typical, it came back for you. It's usually late teens, early twenties. And for you it was when you're around 25. The thing that's unusual, and we've talked about this, Yoi, about you, is that when it came back, you welcomed it. That's what you mentioned. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't scare you. <laughs> and uh, so many people I, I spoke with when it came back, the understanding is the spirits are like, okay, I know you can see me now. I want, you know, I'm bothering you until you, you, you know, relent and, and work with me. And for you, Yoe, you were willing to work and it, it just never was a frightening experience. So you're very fortunate that way. So at the Saulo, you started with a prayer circle. So you did that, you met people and it had support for, for what was going on with you. Um, you became involved then primarily with healing, but you've also done trance work. Um, the, and, and Yoe wants to make it very clear, I'm just getting this out there, that when he did his healing sessions, and there was a period of time when that was very much what he did, they were nights and weekends, and they were free of charge. Wow. And, and that was very important for Yoe. And not everyone does that. I mean, again, everyone's different. But Yoe felt this is given to me from a divine source, and it's not for me to take money for. And I think that's um, really an important thing to say. So I'm getting out a few things that you may not say yourself, Yoe. <laughs> um, in, in our first meeting, I just want to say Yoe is a, a, a wonderful spokesperson, has a lot of words, and you were very shy, and you had Hulda come along to translate, which you did not need at all. <laughs> And, and once we got talking, um, it was just such a, a joy for me to have this connection to you um, as someone who was so generous with your time and with your thoughts and your magnanimity about humanity. So we had this great discussion about a lot of it having to do, as I mentioned, with the, the fact that we have this, all of this, all of us, this source within that we just need to allow through, um, talked about spirits a little bit, 
you, you did finally admit <laughs> there are spirits working with you, helping you heal, but that wasn't the first thing you said. That wasn't your emphasis. And again, different people will emphasize different things. And for you that at that time anyway, it wasn't. But what you did suggest is um, when you're talking about your healing, this is how I heal. I, I first, the first session, when I, someone comes to me, I, I put my hands on their head to, to get information. Oh. And then you said, do you want to have a demonstration? <laughs> and I, I was very new at this. I didn't know what I was getting into. And I said, okay, you know, thinking, I guess this man won't, you know, I, I don't, I don't know you, but okay. So we met at night after your work uh, in the mechanic shop, I think of parts and all that you were selling. We met and there was in one of those, you saw the room, in one of those rooms, there was a table. He had me, you know, with a blanket lying on the table, spent some time, about 15 minutes with your hands on my shoulders. And you said, oh, this is take your, that. The point of that is to get you to relax and settle. <laughs> and you said, oh, you're not very relaxed, are you? Because I'm thinking, oh, what's going to happen? <laughs> so anyway, finally, I did. And you put your hands on my head. I don't know if you remember this, Yoey. Um, so you put your hands on my head and spent about 10 minutes. OK, then it was over. And you said, this is just what I would do. I'm not going into a healing you know, a relationship with you, but this is what I do on my first healing session. So Yoey proceeded to go starting from my head to my toes to tell me all the things that were amiss, a little bit off. I mean, nothing terrible was going on and absolutely <laughs> pinned everything. So he started with your left shoulders really out of whack. What's going on? And I said, you know, it's actually from trying to learn Icelandic. I was walking to school and holding up note cards. And that first, I didn't even realize until anyway, my, my left shoulder was totally out of whack. You said that the center upper center of your upper back, there's this point there, which it seems really sore. That was a burn from computers. Cause I was doing trans transcriptions for hours and hours and hours from these interviews and that was a computer burn tightness in my left arm the the muscle in the back of my left arm I, and I didn't recognize that until that night I realized that the laps I'd been swimming in the pool geothermal heated pool um, was making my arm sore so so you you totally got that my right knee you said might need surgery I said actually I'd had surgery on it and it's still bothering me I mean just these absolute pinpoint pinpoint and then you said your nails, ah, that didn't work. But then the last thing you said was, you've got, now I can see that there's a sharp pain above your eyebrows, especially your left one, which did not register. And you said, one of the ways that you, that you pick up on what's going on is you feel it in your own body. And you said, no, I'm feeling that in my own body. So it's either you or someone that you're close to. So sure enough, <laughs> my husband, Nick, I talked to him, uh, I don't know, a couple nights later, and he said- It was the night, it was, uh, I think, uh, the day after. Okay, it was the day, okay, you do remember the day after, and asked him, he's right there, um, you know, how is he doing? He's like, oh man, I'm having um, terrible sinus uh, allergy problems, because it's May, so this is this time of year, and I've got this pain, it's like an ice pick. In, in, in especially yeah. above my left um, eyebrow. I, so I also I also told you that uh, uh, if you find out who it is, it's going to be off the day after. Okay, okay, forgot that part. Okay, you so you're taking that. better notes than I am. Mm -hmm. So the point of doing that, Yoi, you told me, which makes a lot of sense, is partly to diagnose people that you're going to work on. But it's also to instill um, trust and faith in the process, because uh, it's, healing isn't something where you can just be this passive recipient. It's something that you, through your trust in your own, the power of your own mind, are able to, to, to sort of assist. Awesome. So as a result, I just want to finish by saying that I did interview a number of people that Yoey had worked on about their experiences of healing. It was you know, wonderful and I've written about it. Um, and that Yoe also has um, a doctor who's now retired in Akureyri who would send patients to him. Um, and I, I spoke to one patient who's also a doctor, didn't want me to use his name, um, who'd been helped uh, by Yoe. So, so this is not true of all doctors. A lot of them are just really don't want to hear about unlike mal. They're really not interested. It's really kind of, I think, I suppose a threat or just a cognitive threat. I don't know. Um, but in the case, in this case of this particular doctor, his sense is 
you know, if, if there are many ways of healing, who am I to, to, to sort of cut short the, the yeah. potential for other kinds of healing? So, so Yoi, I know, so now I just feel so grateful to have you here. And I know that since we have spent time, I've also, you know, learning about healing and you were very involved in healing. There's been a lot going on in your life. And as you said, you know, you've been learning things through these injuries that you've had and things have changed. And, and I'll just go back to the idea that Unplug Mal allows you to go with the flow. It can change. It doesn't have to stay the same. It doesn't mean that it has to be one way. So I, I am interested in hearing, you know, anything you've got to say and also um, hearing more about what you're learning. So um, again, thank you, Yoe, so much um, for um, joining us. And um, uh, it's, it's great to have, it's just a joy, almost brought me to tears when I saw your face on Zoom. It's like, oh, Lord. So thank, thank you. Thank you for that beautiful introduction, yeah. uh, Corinne. And welcome, Yoe. Yeah. So thank good you. to have you. Thank you for ha yeah, having me here. Yeah. But, uh, well, uh, I, I didn't quite know actually how, how big this were, but uh, I'll do anything for Karin if she asks me. And uh, well, I have heart for uh, to teach people about what we are. So, of course, I would not say no. <laughs> so I'm very pleased to be here. Well, let's start in the beginning. Um, Karin outlined your story, but start. How did you first notice this? Um, healing ability in childhood. What was it like for you? How did that journey begin? And how did your mother support that? Well, uh, when I was around two, and, uh, two or three years old, uh, I almost died uh, of a uh, disease, which uh, a lot of uh, kids got. Uh, I don't know the English word for it, but... Uh, 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 and uh, But my grandfather in, in, in my family, my father's family, he was uh, sitting in a circle with Oliver Tregosson, which is one of the famous healer in Iceland in the North Coast. Uh, he called mom and asked me, how is you? And he, it sounds like he knew how bad I was. And he said, he will be okay tomorrow. Uh, so the day after, uh, everyone was thinking that I was <laughs> probably dying. But uh, the day after, I was just fine. Um, uh, well, I uh, started to notice uh, people, which others didn't notice when I was around uh, between uh, four and five years old. I started to describe. I came, first time I came, I ran to my mother, mother and said, I'm, I'm very scared to the, with the old lady. Uh, she is always messing with my, uh, you know, stuff, uh, which I was playing with. And my mother said, she's just uh, taking care of you. She's watching over you. And so don't worry. Uh, so I just went inside and started to play and uh, I was very comfortable after that chat with my mother. And so it didn't bother me at all. Uh, she, she told me the story because I, I, of course, couldn't remember that. But she, she told me after, after a while I came, the old woman is gone. Uh, and where did she go? My mother said, and I pointed at the outdoor and said she went there. So uh, I quite often saw this old woman and she came often to me and that was my grandmother mm -hmm. uh, after description. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I was quite aware of a lot of people I watched them. I didn't know that they were weren't from this, uh, well, this time of life uh, because when I just looked the other way and looked again, and they had disappeared. But sometimes uh, they were, uh, suddenly they, they dis, uh, appeared. So kind of a, well, of course, uh, first time you, you can, you know, get kind of shot first, but it, it kind of, well, my mother always told me about this and my grandmother, uh, she was uh, written about here and, and she was very, uh, used her skills a lot so my mother told me a lot about her and, and her abilities and uh, so she was uh, uh, she had this ability as well my father didn't and he was quite not uh, well not very fond of it even though his father was but but he didn't quite talk he did not talk about it my mother did so she made me very comfortable with it so I'm very grateful for her to teach me about this uh, well, the spiritual world, actually, because uh, 
that taught me, you know, uh, and has taught me through my life. We are, we are material, and we are a, a spirit as well. So, uh, well, I don't know where we get to that later. But when I was, uh, when this was happening to me, and I sometimes told people that something that I was told and, and, and that came to, was true, and uh, I didn't uh, being aware firstly uh, that I was actually being a kind of medium telling people about things and around them and, and like that. But um, then it went away, as uh, Corinne said to me, I was 14, uh, and it appeared differently when I was around 25. What was the change? Well, the change was, uh, it, it, it started, uh, well, always been aware with uh, the energy. So, uh, they always knew the energy, even if I couldn't see it. But I, of course, I could see auras and things like that. And uh, it started uh, for me uh, when my younger daughter was sick and uh, uh, she had gone to doctors and uh, she had a large sore here on her neck and uh, they couldn't, uh, they were giving some kind of a, uh, um, how do you say it, uh, stuff. You know, to put on it, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, and nothing worked. So one evening I was there because my mother taught me very, very good thing. That was to pray about you know to to the the only prayer that Jesus taught us, and uh, she taught taught that to me. So I, I taught my daughters to do that, and my, I'm t teaching my grandchildren to do that as well. Uh, because I believe in high energy and I believe in God. Uh, and uh, there I was standing over her bed and I was uh, starting to pray to God to uh, heal her. And I was, of course, putting my hands around this. And I, then I felt, felt my hand start to warming, warm very much. So I put it the other one and I still was praying. So I, I, I did this for one week and the sore was closed. And after another week, we didn't see any scar. So that was, uh, then I started to work with the healing. And after that, I, I did uh, go uh, very soon to the Saulo. Uh, I went, uh, I tried to send my brothers there for a meeting because he had some difficulties in, in his life. So I ordered a meeting for him. I said, yeah, it would be good for you. But he didn't go. Uh, I went there and the meeting was, of course, it was for me to help me to take my next steps for healing. And uh, uh, my grandmother came there and she proved herself very well through that medium because I, of course, had been uh, been aware with her because I can feel some, uh, you know, uh, smell. Uh, you know, people has a different smell. I can feel when mom, mom, my mother is around me, uh, I can feel when she is around me and, and also when my grandpa comes to me because he I can hear him actually because sometimes I can hear words so I know his voice and and uh, well it's it's different uh, how they appears to me and how they approach to me so uh, that meeting was for me so then after that I went for sessions for you know the praying circle and that is one of the most best or best steps that I have taken in my life because that taught me so much for using my uh, praying abilities to help others. And that's something we can all do actually for, for us, ourselves, and uh, for others. Is there a proper way to pray? What did you learn about the, the well, prayer? Well, of course, uh, if you're in a spiritual world, there is always a one rule that you have to use and that's my advice always pray uh, well find your way to pray to god uh, if it is a well everyone has some kind of pray and ask uh, for protect and uh, for light around you and the people you want to work with and and, uh, and always pray for the protect because you know thoughts are energy and if i I've always tried to say to people, if someone is negative to you and you be negative to him back, then there is a circle of negative. Yeah. So always 
sent him a good thoughts instead of negatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I t teach people when I'm uh, doing sessions with them. It's much more difficult for me to try to describe all this in, uh, in English because I'm used to thinking Icelandic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I try my best. And uh, so, so even though this person is negative still for you, if you send him a, a positive mm -hmm. thoughts, at the end, you will break his negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. That is how I have discovered it. But at some points, of course, you don't want to be around that people. You just have to learn to choose what you want to have around you. Mm -hmm. But always send positive thoughts to those who send you negative energy. That's my advice to everyone. And uh, yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, set the oh, yeah. stage. Yeah. 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 Um, I was going to ask your way, um, and also just finding that that way where we can we can honor the the uh, traditions of of the past and still incorporate that with today's world of Christianity because it sounds like you have a balance there between the old ways and then also in, in your your own religious beliefs and how that all comes together. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I just quite didn't finish the other one, but uh, it, it, it relates to what you're asking me because uh, you find your you you find your way to do this. You find the best way for you, but always be, uh, pray uh, to the uh, so highest source as you can. Yeah. And uh, in my, uh, I can only teach what I have learned myself. Yes. And uh, God is my highest source, and. Uh, Jesus, uh, of course, is on. So I always end my praying in Jesus' name. But everyone has to find their own prayer to do this. And as I said, then you have to be honest in your heart. You have to believe in what you're praying for. Because if you're praying for someone you know has a cancer or something like that, I, I was taught always ask for this person to... Uh, be, to be cured because if you start to uh, get second thought of that you're praying for it it's it's not going to work or or you're not good enough for, for doing this praying then you're starting you know to pull the praying back you have to be honest and just give the flow to the person and uh, trust in the, the pray that you do and i do a lot of praying and I, I do it mostly before I go for sleep now. Uh, I, I use my book or I'm sending, uh, get, get sent uh, 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 names uh, in, on my phone. So I, I use that and I, 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 I use it in every evening before I go for, for a sleep and send, send my prayers to those people. Sometimes, uh, of course, I take when it's a very difficult uh, situation, then I bring people to me. But uh, I had this uh, large injury in 2013, and I told my daughter uh, 11 months before, and I I was told about this from the spirit world, and I, I was told you, you were supposed to learn from this spiritually and, uh, of course, to work with yourself in a different way because uh, you can help yourself with healing. It's like the, when, when your mind... Uh, if, if your mind breaks, then it's very likely that your body will break. Or if you break, uh, or your body will break, it's, it's very easy for your mind to break as well. So you have to take care of both things. If you, which way it is around, then you have to think about the other thing. Then you have to think and see and pray for yourself and ask for the energy for, for you and yourself. And that was one of the things that I was taught in the beginning, always pray for yourself to be like a better person or or, mm -hmm. or to be healed if if you are uh, not well enough. And I, I thought to myself, well, that is kind of selfishness to do that. But they told me, if you don't work with yourself to be a better person in, in any way, it doesn't matter whether it's a, your injury or, or your mind or, or whatever. If you're not working with yourself, then you are not as good to help others so be on your best mm -hmm. to be the best for the others 
So that they did teach me as well. So, yeah. Uh, and the old way, like you said, it, it's, you know, uh, well, I've seen uh, fairies and I've seen, uh, yeah, we have a lot of energy and different energy. Iceland is, well, we, we're so lucky. There, there's so much energy here. And, and Corin can describe it because we're only 360 thousand people uh, well it's a very large country but with mountains and uh, things like that after five minutes i'm walking along somewhere uh, and uh, that's very good for us to to be near some you know trees or waters or whatever uh, walking with ourselves connecting to the ground to connecting through the life of earth because earth is is nothing else but energy and that's what we are we are a large energy we have to think of ourselves like this energy but as energy we can be negative and we can be positive so we have to balance that because we are both there is mm -hmm. sometimes we can be a you know negative persons or bad persons uh, or we can be absolutely great people or, or and helping people it's our to choose what we become so that is you know a lot of, of course a lot of things around us helps us going that direction or this direction i don't believe in actually uh, something that uh, you know happens you know there is always connection through what what happens next as i told corin when i met her uh, she was asked whether she could come to the meeting uh, in saulo uh, and, and yes, of course, I said she, she could come and uh, the meeting was, the session was about uh, uh, the energy of praying and, and uh, so I met her and I said, hi, you're going to, re yo, you're going to write two books. No, 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 she said, I write one book. But when she was leaving, she said to me, you've been uh, introducing a lot of wonderful people to me, I'm going to write another book. And I smiled. <laughs> so, so i'm here and i told her that you know this is not the end of it you're just beginning of your journey with which you traveled here to iceland she yeah. can tell you stories about that you've got, you've got a lot of emails between us and uh, once she changed her work and things like that so there is nothing uh, well if you want my view uh, well i i can go from uh, from back and um, forward and things like that it's kind of a, when you are born here, you're, you're, you're born with uh, abilities. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, someone can sing, actually, he's, he's a natural singer or painter or, or, or he's natural to be around people or something like that. We all have abilities. We have to find what ability we came with and what we are going to work with. And we always have to go in our heart to find what we are, you know, comfortable with. If you're doing something we are uncomfortable, we have to find the right way to do the thing we want to do and be comfortable with that. That's uh, our way of, uh, for, for our living and for our to experience life and to go through that, not fighting things, you know, hard way. We have to find the right path. And um, it's, uh, well, like I say, we are this energy, so we have to kind of uh, use it because, as I say, thoughts are energy, uh, prayer are energy. And if you use that and send it to others, uh, it goes, you know, like thought is so strong, it, it, you cannot met, imagine it, it can be measured. I know you can measure it in, in the state. Am I right, Corinne? Has they done that? The healing source? No, that that would be a question for Paul and Laura. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know about that. One yeah. question I do have is that you are describing working with the energy. It would just make sense that we have so many receptors to detect the energy, to work with the energy, to understand the energy, to to receive the download of the energy, and mm -hmm. that a healer, maybe their bandwidth is open further, or whatever your skill set is, but we're in a sea of energy, and we have so many more receptors to 
work with it than we are commonly led to believe by our current society. I think in days of old, they were much more accepting of this. Mm -hmm. um, their worldview would accommodate it. So I think, how does that energy work with you when your hands grow hot, when you have the fragrance of, and, and you note that my father, my grandfather are here, that you hear when you're, you know, laying over hands, oh, Corinne, this is a hot spot, that's a hot spot. How does it, how does it read out for you? <laughs> what is going in the internal process yeah. for you that yeah. you're... Yeah. It, 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 well, uh, in first of all, uh, when I was starting, you know, for healing, and I was taught to, then, then people were just putting, people were sitting and they were doing sessions in the solo. They, they just put their hands around over the shoulder and just were there and around the head and things like that. And people were there for 15 or 20 minutes. The session was done, and uh, then next group came in and, and, and they were people to change for the, the healers as well. So the healer could take uh, a break. And But in this session, I found pain in my body in the beginning. And I, 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 then I asked the person, uh, are, uh, do, you have, do you have a bad knee? Do you have a pain in your knee? So I learned through pain in my body what was uh, going through in the body. And I, of course, sometimes I got pictures shown pictures around uh, about something uh, inside uh, in the body and things like that and a, one older woman who came to me through session was was one of the well difficult uh, tasks that I had and, and took in, in the beginning and she always said to me oh you should work on the hospital uh, as a, well, uh, my, how, well, when they were scanning uh, bones and things like that, you know. MRI, like an MRI. MRI. Yeah. It worked as MRI in the hospital because she, I told her something and, uh, and they found it out in the MRI later. So uh, I also have a doctor who came to my friend. I was called up to the hospital and went there and, and he came in, uh, knew that I... I visited him late, late on that evening and he was taking a picture of the lungs. Uh, and I to that day, I came later on in the evening. Uh, the day after, he was taking a picture again of the lungs. Uh, and he came into the this person's uh, room and, and he was with two pictures. And he said, I don't, I cannot believe this. I, I, I cannot believe this, he said. Um, but I know who was with you. And that was one of the doctors that Corinne uh, spoke to, uh, uh, but didn't want to give uh, his name into the book. But uh, uh, so he said, "This is." He told Corin that this is something that I cannot explain. This is uh, something out of this world, actually. He, he so, do you think that this energy is radiating? I mean, the the field is there. Some of us, like yourself, can pick it up. Your mother mm -hmm. helped yeah. not yeah. shut it down. But are we, so we all have these receptors, but some people are paying attention. Some people can actually let the information in. Some people can decode it. Um, yeah. We're getting information, intuition, and there's so many manifestations yeah. of this energy. That's, that's Different why receptor I sites, you could say, I guess, in modern lingo. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But that was uh, why I was describing, uh, we are born with abilities like a natural singer, yeah. some others have this energy around them, which they can uh, hire and see. we all have energy. We all can learn to sing. We all can learn to paint, but we're not as good even as mm -hmm. the one who with the natural talents. What is your but destiny? We can, what are you we, we can get better and better by practicing it. We all can practice it. We are all, uh, we are all actually healers. And we can heal ourselves. We just have to believe in ourselves. And we have to be believe in, you know, that the life has something to bring for us. And we always have to have some kind of dream ahead of us. Because if you don't have a dream, then you're just wandering around and life doesn't get fulfilled for you. You always have to, as I say, always have a large dream which never comes true, but always try to approach it. But a lot of other dreams... And they, then you, if you believe in something, you have to imagine that it can happen. You like that's the source I'm trying to describe. You can use it for so many ways, good ways. 
to never use it in the wrong way. That's not good. You know, that that's yeah. that, that will pick on you later. That's for sure. And I believe that we can um, knock on the door of that source of that life yeah. force. We can invite it in. And as it strengthens us, we become mm -hmm. better at what we're sent here to do. And also the, a lot of healers talk about being a hollow bone so that the energy flows through them directed yep. to the healing to yep. to bring that in from the creator and and through and being a hollow bone you that is so necessary i think in some some way to see yourself for self-knowledge mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. what you're here to be doing yeah. Right. Can I so, can please. I jump in? Yeah, yeah okay. just before we move on, because what you just said there, Laura, I think is something that Yoey can speak to. Yeah. Um, what I really appreciate about what you said about how we all have different things that we're born with, that we're good at, is something I hear, I heard from a lot of people in Akodere, that um, that means it's different than saying yeah. we're all capable of it and some people are better than others. Because I think that hierarchy can build in spiritual systems. People who can do and see are considered somehow better or more evolved. But that never was an impression I got that some people have, they're born with that gift. Everyone can develop it. Everyone can develop what they have. It doesn't mean you don't do anything. Yeah. But it means that some people, some people are good singers. You know, it doesn't mean, you know, if you can't sing, you're a bad person. <laughs> but the thing is... But, but you want what, to be directed to the path that you are here right, to and do, that's, right? Right. And what is your Yoy authentic was saying, path? Right. Yoey was saying. shut on the side right. of you so you don't go off on a tangent. Right. Right. And, and kind and, of prompted and that. led and pushed along because our path, I think. Yeah. The yeah. great singers, they all makes us want to sing. Yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. That's a good So that, that's Inspiring. good. We have people around us which has these abilities, and we have a lot of people around us with people who doesn't even want to work with this, but they are no. great. Right. And can I, can I just add, this is where, when I remember saying to Rafa, who's very different from you and her experience of when her abilities came back, that it was impossible for her, her to ignore. It scared her very much. It made her feel like a misfit. And she, when I told her, but everyone's got abilities. And she said, but you can choose not to play basketball <laughs> or choose not to sing that song. She did, She felt she didn't have a choice not to use her abilities because it was hounding her. Mm -hmm. So so there's that difference. But can I get back to what Laura was saying? Just because, Yoey, this is where I think you, you won't want to talk. Is this hollow bone idea? I think the healers, what I understand, this is true for trans people, the most important work you have to do as someone with that capacity is get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That if you're working too hard from your own ego and energy, it's, it's just gonna wear you out. You have to get out of the way to allow for that to come through, correct? Yeah. 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 I think that's important. You're in service to that but force, yeah. There is also one thing if you're doing, uh, I was, well, in, in the beginning, I was uh, working with my mother. She was had a bad injury in her knee, and I was sending her a healing through, uh, my, uh, through my body and it, out through my hands and for her knee. And she started to, you know, feel the st strong. She was, it was so strong for her. And she, she kind of, uh, you know, it was very strong. And I gave so much of the healing. And I kind of crawled to the sofa afterwards and I, I wondered why did this happen and they said you're only supposed to use your healing uh, send it through you not take from your energy and that is that, that is possible you can give from yourself as you know in a regular life because when people are coming to you if you're working in a hospital you're giving very much you're caring about your patients and things like that you're giving so much from you uh, then, then of course your strength is going low. But I learned there that I only should use my uh, ability to let this healing go through me. Uh, but I can do a pa make a passion th inside of me to make it go through me, not take it from me actually. So uh, I, I learned that, and that. healing is in uh, several steps. Uh, so I want to understand, uh, tell people around about that. First, healing is of course talking to someone, and he feels better afterwards. That's healing. Mm -hmm. After uh, the next healing is, you know, uh, to use the energy, uh, uh, and uh, the third healing is uh, use the energy and with uh, people from the spirit world, the doctors and things, uh, others around you, which help you with the energy. 
And the fourth one is, is the one you ask for the highest source, which is from God uh, uh, and the source that Jesus used himself. Uh, people can go very high, but few probably that high as Jesus did. Uh, I've heard about people who has gone very high, but we, well, he, he was a spectacular person in, in our lifetime, and he's such a teacher in, in, in lots of energy, if you just listen what he said. So, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have a couple questions in the uh, chat room. I can throw it at you. First of all, starting from the end, going back further, uh, one of the things you brought up was is that the, you, know, you can't misuse this power. Is there a negative side? Do we have to protect ourselves from anti-healing? Is the people that misuse the power? That was a question. Yeah, uh, well, if you send a negative thought to someone, very negative thoughts and you wish them very, something bad because you kind of feel that he deserved it because he made you angry or something like that. Well, you have to get over over that because there's a lot of people who makes you, well, angry or, or through through your life or you're not uh, comfortable with or, or he does something wrong to you in your life but if you send a wrong uh, very bad thought bad thought always hits you back in mm -hmm. some kind of way maybe not right away but it can it's it's like it a karma as, yeah. as i say it will bounce back to you but if you send good things if they bounce to you well be thankful learn how to use it and yeah. always use mm -hmm. some that your you have to find your own prayer which you're comfortable with and the source that you're comfortable with and mine is God. Reminds me as being a kid when we used to say, I'm rubber, you're glue. Everything you say to me bounces off me and sticks to you. Oh, <laughs> Remember that? A truism. Yeah. Uh, another yeah. question we had is, can an atheist, an agnostic, be a healer within the Icelandic tradition? Do you have to have a specific religious belief to be a participant in healing? No. You just have to be honest uh, and find your way to be honest. Uh, you're born here equal to others. And uh, uh, I, I've, I've been asked about whether, whether Christianity is the best religion. And I said I was born to it because if I would have been born somewhere else where other uh, religion had been, Done. and I, of course, have learned that. But no, it is. Uh, you, you always have to be honest with your praying. Uh, you have to find, uh, that's why I always tell people, find the source that you are comfortable with. Uh, you can call God, uh, uh, Thor, uh, Odin, uh, the old uh, gods, which Icelanders, well, did worship in the older days. Uh, my kind of view is that there is only one high source but we have always, that's our humanity. We have changed the names in behalf of kind of a, try to rule things and, uh, you know, uh, in a different societies through the life. Of course, it has grown and, and, and it is growing uh, still in the world. But it's kind of this world is now getting smaller, though. So I think uh, we, we're going to have see some changes in believing in the next, well, I would say next 10 years, something is going to change us a lot. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I find worldviews have very little to do when they're from the outside in, but that direct experience of this source is really the teacher. And you're, are you giving us a, a prophecy that something major is going to change to shift our understanding. And I, I, I believe, uh, I believe yeah. that we are because the, I, I think the world is uh, actually in a, in a very, uh, as you can probably feel all of yourselves if you think about it. Um, the energy in the world has been, the world is actually crazy around us now. Yeah. People are arguing in families uh, just about things which doesn't actually matter. The people are there is so much negative energy and, of course, positive energy uh, as well. There is, uh, from my point of view, there is so much energy that the Earth is getting from uh, the cosmos around us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think 
the humanity always steps up from time to time. I, I, I'm saying that the world is getting much smaller because we all, after five minutes, I, I, I hear news in Africa that happened just a few seconds ago. So I think people people want to, you know, there are so many regulations, but, uh, well, as, as I say, in, in in believing and things like that, we need to start to talk to people because I want to say the Pope uh, and their belief that there could no no one after until he was dead uh, to be said that he was a uh, how do you say it he went a to saint. be a saint yeah a saint but he was on, that was only after he died but people can't be kind of a saint in in a lifetime by doing things, good things. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm saying we should have to think about uh, getting, uh, stepping up. And I think that will happen. There. Something is going to happen uh, after, well, before 10 years, uh, uh, or there's something around the energy which tells me that. Uh, and I also wanted to say about that, the highest church is not going through the Pope or, or going through the, the priest. It is you. Right. Direct. The highest church yeah. is your body, mm -hmm. and you are in control of it. You have to think that you are this person, and you are a bad thing. You are a good thing. You are the one who controls it. You have to work with this church that you are wearing here all the day. If you look in a mirror, you are the person. You you have to see what person you want to be. You have to believe in it. You can do a lot of things if you just want to see them ahead of you. You have to put them inside of you and use the energy to do that. So you can do the highest church in, 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 in during your lifetime. Yeah. yeah, just a quick word. Um, you know, it, the, the word um, Alheimsorka is often used in Iceland to yeah. refer to this highest power. It means universal energy. So it's very generic, and you know this is something you hear all the time. And Andleg Mal, the the formal religion is is Lutheranism, and mm -hmm. and Icelanders are very loose with their. <laughs> they don't go to church much, you know. So it is there, you know. Jesus is there, certainly. the The Bible is there, but it's very. Um, it's Icelanders do things in a kind of loose way. I think it's kind of part of their their culture. So so like what Yoey is talking about is is certainly out there, but also some people are very generic and they just say uh, universal energy is what they refer yeah. to. So I, I want to add, uh, add the story to that because one of my friends who was I was helping with uh, there was a priest in his family and uh, I was in in his anniversary forty years. I was forty years old and I. I uh, he, uh, start to uh, talk to the priest and I said to him, ah, it's very good and I was trying to be funny and uh, very good to have a priest in this family. He looked at me and smiled uh, uh, while you're in. If someone is making them believe, then it's you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's good. Do you think science, good. if it be, builds more sensitive instruments, will ever confirm this universal energy, will ever detect it uh, and see its flow and see its power, or is that really not even necessary? We are those instruments ourselves, are we not? We're the instruments that can detect this energy, work with this energy, direct this energy, imbibe the energy, give it out, uh, we're the conduit for it. So, um, yeah, I'm just wondering what's going to be the pivot of this change that, that has to come. I mean, you could say 14.8 billion years as this evolutionary arc has come to, come to this to propel this forward, if this universal energy um, and its growth. Well, as I say, uh, uh, well, I have to go a little back. I, I'm not sure I understood the question right. Just a minute. That's okay. <laughs> Marie, do you want to yeah, add yeah, in? Yeah, it's interesting. Here? So Tony had this um, question. Is that what you're kind of referring to? Are there objective measures yeah. Yeah. of the energy other than cause and effect, audible, visual, electric? 
electrical or other signals. I'm not seeing the chat. Where did it go? It's very funny, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tony, go ahead and jump funny. on. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Yoe actually even mentioned this that maybe Corinne would know about how science can prove this energy. I, I that's, that's above my pay grade. We've had many discussions on that, but yeah. we're here to, yeah. So, yeah, Tony, I'm, say more. Well, Okay, well, I'm always interested, in, are there metrics? Uh, and if something is this powerful, are there, are there any um, scientific ways that we can measure this? And I'm sure there are many, many ways we can look at the collection of data. But uh, uh, I just wondered uh, if we have very, a very sensitive electrometer, if we are measuring skin resistance, does anything ha happen through an EEG? What happens if, if we are in a room with copper mesh all around it? Do we still feel the energy through that or is it stopped? Uh, this, these are um, may, maybe practical questions, but, but you can begin to ask, ask uh, scientific questions these ways in, in a manner that would be repeatable. And uh, and once we do that, it kind of opens up the world a little bit, I think. Uh, of course, I'm speaking as a scientist, so. Uh, right. Uh, but are, are you familiar of anything in particular that is able to do that so far? Well, we, we've heard about some things. I think Dean Radden um, uh, spoke about that in this forum a, a while back, and I don't want to rehash that. But but at some point, we, we may want to try and combine the, the various metrics that are, are possible with with the spiritual practices that obviously evoke a great amount of energy I, mean, I i too have been able to use my hands and feel things in other people's bodies without touching them so i it makes every bit of sense to me uh and it, it's almost perceived to me as temperature but I, I i kind of know and then i feel in my body what they're feeling okay. but but there are very sensitive instruments that are not that expensive an electrometer cost a few hundred dollars and it may have 10 to the 15 ohm resistance and we could see changes in electric field all around us with this uh, i've not seen anybody publish on it so uh, but I, I i should stop this uh, this is too yeah, much yeah. fun but, but your scientific well, you know, brain always brings um, up those good Dean, questions uh, at the institute of noetic sciences right Started by Edgar Mitchell, the, the astronaut whose life changed when he pulled back. Pulled and back saw, from the planet, physically Earth. pulled back, yeah. Yeah. He was looking at uh, random number generators where you can try to move it, right. um, but that's a machine. But imagine how much more powerful it must be, uh, Yoe, to work with people and emotions and right. need and uh, in prayer. Right. Um, so, yeah, right. my goodness. Yeah. And I really think we are those instruments. Yeah. And no matter how much scientific data you're going to gather, for some people, they're going to dismiss it. They're going to find some way to dismiss it. So but it is um, a, really, I think the life-transforming experiences, direct experiences and encounters, where it's irrefutable. That happened to you, Corinne, as a well, professor of religious studies. You said I went in skeptical, but I could not deny this. It seemed to happen with the doctor mm -hmm. who didn't want to be named when he saw, oh, yeah. you know, how can, how can I explain this? I have yeah. to accept it. And but, I think so it, many of us have had these mystical experiences where mm -hmm. either you deem I'm crazy or you deem the world is crazy for not really understanding this and accepting this. There's more to this world than we are admitting. And so I think the one, that's where, that's yeah, let, where let, 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 so let. many of us are these days. Right. Yeah. So the, the one, like as science, you know, gets more uh, sophisticated, I think it does catch up. Um, and I and I don't think it necessarily means that science, like you say, proves it and then we go, but it's still crazy. So I, I just thought of a very good example, which is the the um, brain um, science that is being done with um, sophisticated, I don't know what the machine would be called, maybe Tony does, that measures people's brains who have been long term meditators. Oh, and yeah. their reactions to, you know, horrible sounds is a very, so they're, because of their meditation, their brains actually operate differently. So I think once we can start measuring things, then maybe the, it could catch up. So it's yeah. a matter of how do you and, measure? And, you know, what and I also think that about. when you are imbibe this energy, when you activate this energy within you, when you call forth this energy, it changes you. Do you not believe, uh, do you, do you agree, Yoe? that it yeah. is changing your circuitry. It is, um, yeah. you're adapting to it. You're being a better yeah. receptor the more that you call it in. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, before before we leave the metric, I, Bobby just put a, a note in the chat, and I agree totally. There's the instrumentation that HeartMath has right. that's relatively accessible. It's not expensive. Uh, there are a number of things that can be done. We're not waiting for the next James Webb Space Telescope to uh, <laughs> be able to do this. Uh, but, but, we're, but there are tools that can be used that will inform, I yeah. think. Yeah. And, and, and I get excited about these. Uh, I'm trying to formulate this in my own world too, because I have many experiences that I cannot explain uh, easily with science, but, but they are definite, undeniable. Well, uh, we thank you for being the scientist mystic, Tony, who did work on the James Webb uh -huh. Telescope. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you, Tony. Uh, That's but, really uh, good point. Yeah. Yo, you, were, yeah. you were also yeah. going to say? Yeah, yeah, I was going to answer your question. But, well, you know, working with a prey and to help people, well, it always has to be, I always feel best in my life when I'm helping someone. So that suits me very much to, you know, have this, uh, well, my, ju my journey did go this way because it makes me feel very good to help others. And it makes you better when you're helping others. And uh, of course, it, it, it grows you as a person to be, you know, working with, with people and see the situation. You learn a lot of things. My injury taught, taught me as well as a lot of things because Everything you go through life, which if it is you learn through others or you learn through yourself. And that, that depends on how you take what you're going through. Uh, are you going to uh, take it to you and learn from it? Or are you going to just, uh, you know, annoy it uh, and you have to go through it again to actually, <laughs> ah, okay, I have to learn something from this. So, yes, you, you can't actually escape the curriculum, the can we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it comes back to that original point you made that the world is becoming smaller and we're connected in new ways, both through technology and hopefully that can be transitioned into something more positive. And Brian asked a good question. He says, you know, can you speak to the change that's happening in the world? How might we learn to pray for the world? Uh, what new yeah. ways of coming together as a world community can be possible? And he says, how do we understand global consciousness in ways that it might be beneficial for us to guide ourselves as a planet forward? Yeah, because uh, it's like uh, I have said it in a, well, several worlds, but I, of course, I understand that you do not understand it. Uh, I'm describing a lot of big issues in our lifetime, but life itself is our teacher uh, yeah. and uh, if we don't learn from it then we then, uh, then we always have to go through it again and uh, well well sometimes the world is teaching us in a you know in a hard way and you can learn in the hard way as well as the in the good way and uh, which is a better teacher that depends on how you learn from each another you know sometimes a good way you ignore it or and the bad way you 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 find a way to make a bad thing you can change it into sometimes into a good thing you know and make help others through your your situation which you go through which was very bad experience or things like that then you don't want others to go through that so you you can prevent others to go that way or, or or as I say negative can be positive later and and if you learn from things then it is and you well a praying I always use my prayer I always pray for a, a peace in the world and I always send those who is actually uh, like now in Russia I, I, I send a pray for all the people around there and I, yeah, I'm right. always send praying to uh, your state as well for your president as well that they make the good decisions for us because yeah. decisions are made and, and they can do a lot of things to others so that happens in your own life as well uh, that's why I have described it you have to be the best version, best version of yourself to be to helping others. And everyone is, a, we are all uh, human and we all do mistake. But if you learn from the mistake, then, then we can avoid that mistake and be a better person. Yeah. So 
what is I always send the peace, uh, ask for peace in the world and ask uh, I ask the highest source, source for that for us to grow, you know that we doesn't have to have this war. We, the, the world is so large and we can benefit so much if we just change our thoughts. And if we learn what we are, we are a material and we are a, a, a spirit. Mm -hmm. And when I die, I leave this body behind because it's like you're driving in your car. It's not your car who was driving it. It is when it stops, it, someone steps out of the car and that was the person who drew it. And, you know, uh, then people have said to me, well, well, well now we have automatic cars which drives for themselves yeah yeah i can walk in my sleep <laughs> <laughs> you just gave us a, such a mm. wonderful insight into the fact that um it's not so much a concern about what the government is doing so much a concern about what's happening politically or environmentally it all comes back to the individual our own level of consciousness, our own yeah. level of being the best version of ourselves that it's the, the responsibility lies within and then we can have an impact on the world around us. And what if all the negative energy heaped on the world leaders was really uh, towards their healing, towards oh. their awakening, yeah. for, for their, their spiritual knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how are we well, using the energy that we do have? I have a question about the, are you done? Are you, yeah, you wanna go ahead. The pain that you feel. So when you are working with someone and you feel the pain, are you taking that on? Or is your body just like a meter readout? Like beep, 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 well, I, red I, I, zone I, I, here, I, I, green zone yeah. there. Is it, are, are you taking in any of that energy? And um, yeah, then I have another follow up question. Go ahead. So. Yeah. I, I wanna just finish the other question with, uh, about the energy and how we are praying about the world. Uh, well, to be the best version of ourselves, uh, yes. how we can provide that uh, world to be better. I always start with the next person around me to try to uh, explain him and to, you know, try to change his thoughts about this. And you always, I always say, just start with the one person, you know, try to try to help him to be a better. Yeah. And uh, I've helped people. And uh, like, as a, I'm a mechanic and uh, there was a guy who has a broken car and they asked me for my help. And I just fetched everything to repair the car and I did it for them. And and they asked, wanted to pay me. And I said, no, 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 just help someone else instead. Pay it that forward. was the payment I asked them. So yeah. that's the kind of way if people start to change their thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, uh, then we can help one to get better and others and others and yeah. that's how the large movement can be a can chain go. reaction around the world yeah. Right? Yeah. One yeah. To yeah. The next that's the next. kind of a answer i would also want to give but your question uh, about the uh, the pain i actually feel the pain sometimes very strong so it's very it can be painful but uh, after my injury i i uh, knew that I would be closed and I would work on myself. I just recently, about a year ago, I started to take people again for my uh, to wow. the bands and, uh, but only difficult ones. Others are just you put my names the names in in the book. Of course, a lot of them are, are very uh, serious as well. But uh, the uh, I, I never ask for any names or anything. It all, I always said to God, uh, well, if, if I'm supposed to help someone, you just send him oh, to, to me. I'm not going to fetch no one. I, I'm, I'm not going to put this up, up to my beliefs or anything. I just, if someone asks me, then I'm glad to talk about it. Mm. So, yep, the pain is very strong uh, and it guides me, you know, actually to, to find what uh, the part of the body is broken or. Uh, and it took me a while to find out which was uh, was with, like Corinne. It, it was uh, she had the surgery recently. It, it took me a time to find what was old, what was. But I don't know. I don't remember how uh, old this was. Whether you had recently gone through a surgery or it was older, I don't remember that. But uh, it took me a while to find out which was old problem and what was new.
Well, it was impressive that you found the problem. To me, I didn't care if you could decipher the old or the new with the fact that you knew my right knee, my left shoulder. Yeah. I, and I think, Yoe, there was, you You had a couple ways of diagnosing. One was the pain yeah. and the other was, I guess, image you mm -hmm. mentioned. Is yes. there anything other, are there other ways, uh, yeah. like the Dr. Hans that works with you, does, do you have him well, showing you things? Yeah, well, it just sometimes uh, they just tell me it's much easier than ha to having the pain. They tell me about, well, you should talk about this in his body, but that, that helps me much easier for me. But in the beginning, it was much more that, like I was describing. But uh, now it's more like, you know, the pain is not as much after this because, of, of course, I had to work with my own pain. Own pain. So, so it changes. Uh, it keeps changing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. So when you say you have a doctor work with you, is there kind of somebody whose knowledge is being shared and you're getting it through like direct knowing? You just it just you just know it just comes to you. You're in the knowing about what's happening. Does does the body, the patient's body, speak to you? Does it tell you in some fashion? How does uh, that work? The, no, no, I I cannot. See like Corinne, I, I couldn't see anything, you know, from her body or anything, what, whether she was moving or like that. Uh, it is just through that because I want to have proofs for the people who I was healing for that. I asked, can you tell me something? Can you give me something which I can tell the people who are on a bench that they're you're working for and things like that. And this, uh, and it, it actually did happen in the first healing that I had this pain. From this woman, and I, I, I noticed that. So I asked them, "Can you help me develop developing this so I can describe something for the people and help them?" Uh, but my, I always tell people, go to to see doctor. Never play God yourself. Just use your uh, well prayer. It's a very good gift with the others. You know the med medical things like that, and go for doctor. Always go tell people. I say to all the, the people I teach this, uh, go tell people to go to the doctor. Never be sure of this is going to be cured, but you ask for the cureness in the highest source, mm -hmm. and, and never adopt your your believings or, or prayings, but always ask people to go for doctor. And, and this works together, and the doctors. Uh, they know because people have called me I'm going for surgery on that day or, or this day and uh, I've had, I talked to a doctor which was in a very difficult surgery and, and they were expecting a very long time and he knew that I was going to have a, a, a circle for that surgery and, and he said it was kind of a, a an it, it, unscribable because the energy that we found all in there was so amazing it, everything went so good and mm -hmm. uh, the surgery went so well beyond our our beliefs in the beginning so you know I, I think all I'm talking to doctors as well about this i've talked to uh, i've talked to uh, psych psychiatrists about this and i was very fortunate to been able to see show people the healing work, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the healing source. I, I don't know whether Corin has told you about it, but it's okay by me. What what I think is important, Yoe, is what you just said about not taking it on yourself, giving the patient or the client all the possibilities, sort of like what the doctor did by sending the patient to you, a couple, yeah. not just one, but several. Is that you you, you take all that's available and don't assume that you're the only one. And, and that's, I think, incredibly important. And it, it connects to one of these questions um, that reminds me of a story that you told. Is there a negative side? This is from Tony. No, no, no. This is from Bob Woodruff. Um, this implication that if we don't get well or die, that we've not done it correctly, that it's our fault somehow, or, the, and I would say the healer's fault. And this is a problem that the other side of the problem, if you take it on yourself, if it doesn't work, you feel like a failure and you feel like somehow, you know, God has failed you, you failed God. I mean, these are really huge questions and you don't, you don't take the responsibility all your own. You also don't um, take the fault. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you had that, you, you had to learn care. that the hard way. 
yep. with a woman that you wanted yep. to heal very badly of esophageal yep. cancer yep. who died right what I, what I learned after after that says uh, that well they taught me as I described for you because I was going to quit I, because I said to God in my conversation with him because I always talk to God uh, I said I don't want this if I cannot heal people I don't want this uh, I'm not going to do this uh, but uh, of course I had a lot of others very good you know outcoming and, and things like that but this was just my belief. I just want to help everyone who comes to me. But that taught me, uh, I helped her uh, when she was passing over. I took her pain. Meanwhile, she was passing over. And I just knew that later. And she came and asked me to do, do this job. Uh, she went, actually, to, well, my dad, who didn't want to go to medium, went to a medium. <laughs> and this woman came there and she threw the, one of our greatest mediums here in Iceland and uh, described everything and she said you helped me so a lot you know for going from uh, this life to the other life mm -hmm. so after that I knew I'm always helping people in some kind of way even if it is to make it easier to pass and um, uh, and I may then I mean it I, I'm always the energy is always helping the pray you're all the praying is always helping people. Uh, the outcome might not be the one I want or, or, right. or for the relatives or things like that. Right. That is not something that I can. Uh, mm -hmm. there's a, well, there's a higher I just try my best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try my best. We're not always and, privy to. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's why I always tell people that, that they, because people, uh, well, they should go for doctor and this should work together and they come to me they are doing their things uh, what's the doctors are saying they go for surgery things like that but uh, i'm also working on the healing as well hmm. yeah it's a life journey Hello. isn't it for for all of us you know um it's interesting that i heard someone describe energy vampires because you talked about being depleted but another aspect of that is energy vampires that want to kind of glom onto your energy. And the, the gift is show them they can go direct to the energy source. Mm. If everybody could just open that up and go direct to that energy source, mm. then um, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'd all yeah. be the better for it. Bobby said it this way. She said, outer pace is an inside job from our best, most evolving consciousness self ripples this effect throughout the greater field. Yeah. The field of the world, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have more to say, Bobby. You should jump on and uh, Yeah, I have some say, questions yeah. and stuff. And, um, um, yeah. And I, I There's one thing I would uh, well, add to in the beginning. If people start to work with praying and things like that, they can people can get more opener and to be open for feelings around them and things like that. So you have to be aware of that uh, when you start working with uh, praying and working with your spiritual side of you, uh, that you will be, the, 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 the spiritual stations in your body will be opened uh, uh, in the steps if you start work with this. So always use the pray, pr you know, praying for the protect, yeah. but be aware you can get energy from the field that you are like if you go for shops or cinema or things like that and that is a lot of what people told here they were uncomfortable going for shopping around a large area where people are around but i always it's simple for me because <laughs> because i had my mother uh, mm. i just use a switch button uh, i see a switch light now i'm going for spirit light and i put it on and i'm on yeah. But when I'm finished, I switch it off. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of uh, do, yeah. well, I'm, when I'm in a good mood, I kind of, when I go for a cinema, things like that, and I kind of are open on things like that, I have to close it because I forgot myself and I can get the vibes from the area and, and then, and then I, good vibes and, and, of course, sometimes better. But sometimes... Be, um, and also walking in nature to refresh as yeah. well. Yeah, you, yeah, you can find this vibration in the nature as well. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. Uh, Corinne, you well, know, it's as a sense of balance too, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. 
No, I was just going to say, Corinne, as a uh, comparative religious scholar person that's done, that's done the homework, I mean, there's a, there is this common thread of, of some power of intention, a power of prayer, a, prayer a, a, a means by which it connects society from a sociological point of view, that there's something more to it that happens. And I'm sure that this is really maybe one of the inspirations for you to even be in this field of study. Oh, you know, it's interesting because my, as a kid, yes, very religious, very nature filled, you know, all that yeah. good stuff. Um, but my um, entry into religious studies was through theology in Berkeley, which was very, and I maybe even mentioned this last time, okay. political okay. about social justice and right. things like that. And my intention going to India was to study a, the cult of a saint who was like a, a radical, I thought, um, mm -hmm. and she was a healer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they people went to her, duh, you know, because in, in, in India, that's why people go to shrines, typically, it's it's not to be inspired to have a revolution, but it's to be healed. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been whacked back <laughs> into this world multiple times, I, you know, so I, I am a learning, I'm learning, I'm always blown away, and I feel so grateful, so grateful, really, I, right. I, I guess I'm, I'm not a fighter against these things, I, I go with it. I want to just say, um, somebody had a good question. Um, Yoa, you can uh, tell me if this sounds right. Bianca asked, is the medical establishment in Iceland more open to, uh, to the work of healers? And I would say that the part of the medical establishment that's, that has become fairly open, and I talked to a lot of people, is psychology. Mm -hmm. The, the uh -huh. psychologists, when this time in your late teens and early 20s, the, the spirits are back and you're afraid that you might be going crazy. Um, oftentimes parents will bring their young adult children to psychologists to ask, you know, is, are they mentally ill? And I know psychologists who don't believe in spirits who say, yeah, they come and I tell them, I don't believe in spirits, but you're not mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And usually that is supported by the middle, the medium who will say, no, this person is it's just, it's spirits. So there's mm -hmm. an openness and a, an allowance for hearing voices and seeing things that you don't find in other countries. They allow for it um, in the, you know, largely. And, I, and even the standards, I talked to one of the heads of the psychological world in, in Akureyri, who said even the standards are different in Iceland. They, they don't get sent away to uh, sort of Drug radicalize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, if they're hearing or seeing things, if, if this is, mm -hmm. they're functional people. Um, I think doctors are less medical, regular medical doctors are less open than psychologists. Um, yeah. So you find a few, but not many. So would you agree with that, Yoe? Yeah, but, but uh, I always want to add this. We are so few, 360,000. Yeah. So someone has in the family some spiritual uh, person which he cannot <laughs> deny that. <laughs> right well, right yeah. and you hear stories where kids will, about it yeah yeah and, and and as even priests there's another category people who are priests who have been trained you know not to go there with spirits since the 1950s plenty of them you know they, they have family members like you're saying yoey or people they know who are perfectly sane <laughs> and they see things that you can't deny so you know what are you going to do about that how do you define um, spirits? How would you describe it, both of you? And then we'll start with you, Yoe. Uh, say, say this again. How do you How? define the spirits or think of the spirits? What's the anthropology of spirits? How do you, where do they, what are they? What is it? What is this field? Well, I, I, will, uh, I will just answer this in, in these words. I'm here in a school. Uh, this is uh, well when I die I go home so uh, this is kind of my car which I'm in now uh, my belief is that I can be reborn again after a while but the soul families stick together and that's my kind of belief and uh, uh, when I go home uh, then uh, I have my spiritual body and uh, it's like when I saw my grandpa Father, first, I saw him as a young man, and on, on, on his best around, well, around thirty plus. Uh, but I recognized him from the pictures. He didn't show me as his uh, when he was old, when I when I knew him. But he passed when I was six years old. But I remember him very strongly because uh, he was a good person. He worked in this 
well healing energy and uh, I can felt so comfortable to sit near him and but I saw him in the first time I saw him after I started working this uh, well for for he as a healer and things like that uh, then I saw him as a young man so it's it's like what you say um, you're never older than you think and actually you are younger than your body says you are yeah. <laughs> but, so that's kind of a you know, yeah does that give you an answer? A bit, yeah, Corinne. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting because what Yoi is describing is, is fairly common in Unblick Mal is that you could be recycled back onto Earth. It's reincarnation, basically. Mm -hmm. Or you, you could be, and, and I don't see, I love what, how you describe this, Yoi, because if we were, let's say, in a spiritualist tradition, they would give you the levels and the types of spirits and they categorize them. And they, and, and the, the, I think the, the sort of, um, there's a, uh, not uncertainty is the wrong word. There's a, um, anyway, a, an unsureness about the future of, of our, our being after this earth because we don't know. And I think that's really important. So there's nobody saying for sure this is how it works. So, but I do hear you can be re recycled, you can be yeah. um, uh, reincarnation, or you could go on and, and hang out in this other level and still be related. And some people like Yoey's uh, medical doctor is helping still, but on that level as a spirit. And when spirits show up, Yoey, I know you have more to say, I can tell. Um, when spirits show up, they show up according to, for those who can perceive them and see them, according to what not only they feel they are, but how they feel you want to see them. So for instance, there's a lot of Native Americans that show up. You know, there, there's these people have guides, you know, all the time. It's like, what is up with these Native Americans? And I remember this is um, from Gunnar. Uh, he explained it to me. He says, I think, and I think he's right. I think this makes total yeah. sense. You know, if you're within this they logic. Wear any garb, they, well, they do that, so to relate. Yeah. That in all our lifetimes that we've lived, mm -hmm. at some point we were native people because that goes way, way back. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to appear and I've got all these choices because I've had all these lives, I had all these hats. If I'm going to appear in a way that will gain the trust of the person that I'm appearing to, and they believe that Native Americans have this connection, I, that will be the, my appearance that I will show. But I could show up as all these different people or at different mm -hmm. stages of my life, I could be young or old. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot of things going on. And I like, I'll just finish by saying, I like the fact that you can either be, just from my own feeling, reincarnated, to have it, you know, you got to learn some more, or maybe for a while, be available, you know, as a spirit, because then the people that we love, or that, you know, that loved us are around yeah. for us for a yeah. while, because yeah. if you're Take really scared here. about reincarnation, they're gone, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a nice system. I like the system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So oh, you know, plenty of places to navigate. It also puts a new uh, uh, take on death. It's not a failure. You're going home for a while. Yeah. Oh, home. Yeah. That's a very common. Him. Yeah. 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 I always tell people. Uh, uh, I was uh, in a meeting with a new board of the uh, uh, solo here, uh, our society here in, in Akure, and I said to them, uh, I was describing because there was new people. I, I'm kind of a uh, well looking forward to go home. Yeah, uh, 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 well, well, if I die, I, I'm not. I'm looking forward for that when that happens. I, of course, I want to be here and learn more and be with my grandchildren and things like that. But uh, who, who doesn't want to go home? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always tell Calling people you. that: don't be afraid. Yeah. Just we are we 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 are the spirit and we are uh, material. Or which we leave the material and spirit goes, and that's a very light body and thin body, and. You know, if I want to describe the the worlds that we can, I can explain it to you. If you're sitting in an airplane and, and you're looking and the airplane is starting to put the motors on and they're spinning very fast, then you can just see through them. But if you take your camera up and uh -huh. take a, a, a picture of it, mm -hmm. then camera can take a picture of the uh, the, the the motors, right. which are uh, the blades, right. yeah. and because 
they pick up more speed and yeah. the soul is on a more speed than actually mm -hmm. your material body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or well, that your eyes can perceive well, I like I that yeah. being in yeah. the in, being in the mechanic business you have a lot of metaphors for vehicles <laughs> yeah, oh he does I I like that. That. as yeah. the tire yeah. spins <laughs> <laughs> I have to call in Fred Smith because he's the one who introduced us to you Corinne so we want to thank Fred and say hi Fred with Papageno on the shoulder hi there <laughs> yeah. yes it's my my spirit animal <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I thank you, uh, Yoli. I mean, it's really a gift to have uh, Corinne bring you here like this um, and uh, uh, to see you, meet you, as it were. And it's, it's, it's really wonderful. I'm so appreciative. Um, what you... Can I just say that your good friend, Susan Luchtendorf, visited Akudeti, so this is a yeah. connection. So do you remember Susan right. and her friend? So she's very good friends um, with Fred, uh -huh. she okay. and her husband. So um, so there's a connection for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a small world. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Susan is a psychologist and, and, and she's a really well-known psychologist, research psychologist at that. So, um, so that sort of kind of bears what you were saying that psychology people more than medical people, you know, would take an interest in this. And um, the I, I I I'm just thrilled to to be a party to your discussion. I mean, it fits in a in um, consider, considerable extent with what I've seen elsewhere in the world, um, in the U.S. and India and elsewhere. And this is kind of a loosening up of um, restrictions. Um, you know, there was a there was a period of I mean, she got into this uh, politically. She said, and um, back way back in the day. And um, uh, there were kind of political, religious um, restrictions that were placed throughout the world, throughout the colonial world, on um, on the notion of of healing and, and spiritualism and 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 possession and these sorts of things, and that's really considerably loosened up. And and um, whatever we can say is going on in the world today, that there's a lot more openness towards this sort of phenomena, <clears throat> wherever it is, uh, than, than, in, uh, than, than there used to be. Even 30 years ago, you said in 1990, things began to open up again. Mm. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's, that's kind of about the, I think, the, the, the date that, well, let's say the 80s, uh, yeah. there was a lot more openness, especially in places like Korea, and towards, towards people knowing or publicizing or or going out, you know, with what with this kind of traditional knowledge, and um, another thing I found that's that's um, consistent is um, there's the family connections. Uh, the spirits are really within the family. Um, I mean, we think about uh, about people's personalities; they stay with us after 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 they die, even if we didn't know our grandfather very well. Mm -hmm. They're they show very up much in interesting ways. I mean, I'm, I'm becoming increasingly convinced that that those whom we were close to um, remain with us, and they can they can take on certain aspects of of uh, of knowledge that may be emanating not strictly from us, but from their own mm -hmm. background and in in, um, in what they what they work with. That's how these things get transmitted from generation to generation. Uh, so it's, it's, I mean, I could go on and on about that, but actually I, uh, anyway, I, I, that's all I'll say at the moment because I don't want to. <laughs> so Fred, I would add, you know, Korea is a really interesting um, example of things opening up in the 80s in Korea. And now all of a sudden shamans that were kind of embarrassing became like held up as, as what was important for their culture. I think Iceland is the same way and the Iceland really, you know, didn't come out of really tough times in terms of disease and, and just uh, poverty until probably what you would you say the 70s, Yoey? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, tuberculosis. I mean, it was really and, and it's when you have economic well-being, you're globally connected, that you can be proud enough of yourself, <laughs> have enough confidence as a culture to let these things out and, and hold them up. Otherwise, you think, oh, this makes us look backwards. 
And I even think the new age movement in the US is, is was led by people who are upper, upper middle class white people because <laughs> yeah. they they weren't, you know, they were willing Speaking to explore and have yeah. to feel embarrassed about it. So mm. I, I think, yeah, Iceland well, I think is coming also to an own. openness about yeah. let's tell the truth. Let's just speak it out. And people are having these encounters all the time with their departed ones. I know my mother would just, who didn't leave in any of this really until she's talking to her kids and we're convincing her, but she would, she would, my father passed. And so she'd talk about just sitting there reading and feeling him right there and just enjoying it. Smelling and just a having a conversation. She could smell the cigar he smoked. Yeah. Yeah. Just hanging out. And she would openly speak about that with her friends. I was at dinners with her friends and her. And she's mentioning this and they all chime in with their stories. But these mm. are ladies that maybe wouldn't sign up for that. But it's happening. So it's across the board. We have to believe our own experiences. Right? And they're so common and gentle. And yet our society kind of tends to deny it in some quarters. It's interesting to me. Our most precious experiences and our society wants to deny it. I, I don't get that. I, and I would say, you know, following up again with Fred and what he's saying, the yeah. openness, you can see it if you're a teacher. Because every year that the kids get younger or, and more or maybe they're and getting older. This. Yeah. So you can you can see the trends. Um, there's some really interesting, you know, if you taught, if you teach long enough, you can see, especially if you're teaching religion or religious studies, you can see where the trends are going. And definitely when I teach mysticism, I teach this book about Iceland, they're, oh, they're excited <laughs> in ways that I would say 20 years ago. Um, yeah, it was exotic, but not, not in a personal way like it is today. So that's mm. changing. That's, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably what you were talking about in 10 years. Uh, you were saying, you know, some major shift. About time. Within, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, uh, well, uh, I want to tell you one story about, you know, how uh, in, in the healing, uh, I want to talk about one thing. Um, we all lose someone we care for and things like that. I, I want to tell people as well about this in, in my healing work because uh, it is always the one who is behind who is in the grief and, 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 and but when we are in grief and we feel bad it, we make the the persons on the other side feel us very very bad because we we kind of a, with our thoughts when we are so re grieving for someone who has passed away and my wife has a, a friend who has lost his husband and uh, he did go through uh, cancer and things like that and he passed away uh, and um, she has ha had very hard time and uh, sometimes I, uh, I take a, a tarot and I, I, my wife was with uh, some friends here and she asked me can you do some tarot for my friends and I, I gave a tarot reading and I asked her to take a picture of three cards and the one card came to me and I, I described it. I didn't know which one had which card and things like that, but because I, I love spiritual matters in, in all the spectacular of it. And, they, and uh, so I did this for my wife. Uh, and um, there was a description uh, that this woman was holding so strongly for her home and she was kind of stuck there. And uh, I described, of course, a lot of other things, but. Uh, when I came here home and uh, we went over and who had what kind of a reading and things like that, that was her friend who got uh, who got this card that she was so stuck at home and she was, you know, she needed to go more out and to enjoy the life. So uh, when I uh, saw that, uh, then I was aware of the, her husband inside there. But not only that, uh, I was sitting in a chair and I was thinking to myself, should I let her know that he is here and he wants her to move on and things like that. And mm -hmm. um, I told, I did, I decided not to do that at that point because you always have to uh, choose a point when you talk to people about this. And uh, you have to be very sensitive uh, and try to find the best words to, you know, so, so, so you don't hurt people and things like that. So I always ask God for guidance for my words and things like that. But then one thing happened. Uh, I was hit like this in my arm yeah. and I looked around and 
I was thinking it was this do my daughter who was at home at this time, but it wasn't her. And then I felt someone a bit on my shoulder, and, and he was he was just letting me know that I was right, that he was here, there, and I should talk to her. But once he left away, went away, I, I, I told her we need to talk very soon. Uh, because we kind of get stuck in our lives when we lose something. We have to be positive. We have to, everything we go through, everything we, we have uh, gone through the life is there. Nothing, we lose nothing, actually. We just, there's a temporary time that's and, until we meet the person we love or, or we have been with. And uh, we have to go on and live our lives. We, our graduated from the life on earth is not done. We have to go through that experience. So uh, I haven't been able to sp speak to her, but I spoke to her sister and I actually told her uh, about this. And uh, then they told me another thing. It happened on this evening because she is so stuck that she he had lost her husband. One glass jumped on the table. It was very strong. They told me afterwards uh, when I was describing that to her, her sister and my wife, and they said it was amazing. The glass just jumped on the board, on the table, and, and fell down uh, with a white wine. And they said there was no explanation for this. And I got hit on the arm at the same evening. So uh, yeah. we have to, you know, give those who pass away from us, that we send them love, and we have to live on. But we have not lost anything. They are there. There's just short thought that we can give them. We can give them all our loves. And I sent my grandfather and my grandma, who is, is helping me a lot in my healing work. I, I sent them a lot, and my parents, of course, which has passed away, and uh, I sent them so much of love, you know, in this energy. You can't field. be clingy. So, and they can feel it. Let yeah. Them, you know, yeah. Yeah. Live our lives. Well, Fred, wow. thank you for your. Any, any further comments, Fred? Um, many people would read this as. As, as the action of certain spirits. I mean, as, as, uh, as Corinna, I think, was saying, that, that there's um, uh, countless kinds of genealogies of, of spirits throughout, um, you know, identities and categories and, and classes like that, just, just everywhere. And these have been pretty much discounted by the contemporary scientific uh, mind because they are because of the of the separation of the physicality from the mm -hmm. physicality that you know the, that we know about, but you know as we've discussed countless times in this seminar, that that this gap is beginning to close between um, between what science can actually show us, and that's going to continue to close. And that and that in my humble view, much of what we are talking about um, on etheric realms is, is really going to be right out there in the in the physical scientific uh, area of, of uh, proof within the next third era 30 40 yeah. years 30 years yeah. maybe yeah yeah and uh, like they hit on the arm I mean you know who did that was it some <laughs> auto suggestion was it some fantasy or was it just or was it something else that's I mean, the, the many communities in the world believe that, that we're surrounded really densely by different kinds of, of beings where the penetrability between their realm and ours is, is, is pretty thin. So, uh, you know, the separation, the, you know, the buffer zone. Hmm. So, and yeah. we have some connection where a tap there translates to a tap here, yeah. Yeah, somebody in the Kaima Gay Institute in the year 2040 can uh, can talk about how this gap has been completed, how this, this buffer zone yeah. has been <laughs> We close the gap. You know, that's, that's brave yeah. work that you do, uh, Yoe. You, you are willing to endure the pain of others, right? You're willing to um, sit down. I mean, and, and this, is, this is work. So yeah. I think yeah. this is brave work that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, really go explore the universe yeah. in this way and help yeah, be an agent for change and an agent for good. So thank you.
Thank you for sitting yeah. down with us today. And uh, Corinne, thank you yeah. uh, for all the work that you're doing as well, making this so much more accessible. Any final thoughts from you both? Well, he said life itself is the teacher. Yeah. Be the best version of yourself. And what else? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good right there. Well, just just uh, change only one person. It's time to ha or help one person to be a better person of himself. In his time, then 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 you can have, you know the wor world will get stronger by one person by other persons. So start to be that person person. Then others will follow if you are true to yourself. Beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, it really takes showing up in life and being your best. I mean, that's the only way to handle it, right? And 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 just be present. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It really demands that. Well, and it breaks it down that, like he's saying, um, being able to have an impact on one person. Yeah. That starts the that starts the movement. That starts the energy, rather than being overburdened Turn to by the person next uh, to yeah, you. Rather than turning to because I uh, uh, the president of the U.S. doesn't take my calls, so <laughs> you should though. But yeah, but I do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. and so. you're you're more important to me, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, well beautifully. Thank you so much. Yeah. Such thank a you healing so much. conversation just to talk about these yeah. things to hear about. Yeah. Um, the journey. What's your last bit of advice for awakening the healer, whatever that capacity oh. or gift is in all of us? Recognizing of the us. healer within. Yeah. What's your final advice there? Well, uh, remember, you are an energy. And as an energy, you can choose where you give the flow to. If it is to help yourself or work with yourself and your family, then you can use that. But you can do many things. You are the source. You put yourself the limit. And you are the source and you can help others by using this source that you are. You are the church, the highest church in the life of yourself. It doesn't matter where you're from uh, in believing. You just have to be honest and uh, pray. And you to pray for you and your family and for yourself. And, uh, yeah. well, of course, for, for peace and everyone you want to work for and help. Yeah, yeah well said. Thank you. Well, we need to thank yeah. Fred for introducing us to Corinne <laughs> and for Corinne for introducing us to your way. And, yeah. the, and, uh, and what the, fun work you do, Corinne, to yeah. um, really explore these areas and this realm and this world. And then, um, yeah, quite an adventure. Appreciate Very you lucky. pushing your um, religious studies in these yeah. directions. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll get together and have a round of I, I don't think I ever, I mean, to be honest, I don't think it's all my choice at all. I think I just, um, I keep getting pushed in these directions. So. Guided. <laughs> I feel very lucky. Yeah, I feel lucky. That, that's the yeah. wise professor who listens to the signals, <laughs> doesn't uh, try to control the knowledge, the flow of knowledge. Well, yeah. be that open bound. See what yeah, wants to emerge. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. No, you. No, don't, don't log off yet because I want everybody to say goodbye to you and thank you. So, I'm going to ask everybody to unmute their mic. Yeah, everybody unmute your mics and say goodbye and thank you to our guest today, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. much. Wonderful. Thank you. 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 Thank you.